I'm a whole minute late. Don't even start about why I'm a minute late, but the truth is, oh look, I just popped my hair back down. Um, I'm slightly late <laughs> because there was just one of those bloody awful, um, you know, those really big fat blue bottles that make that really annoying noise, that really like fat blue bottle noises. Well, there was one of those at the window and I had to make a decision about pouring my wine, being on time, or squashing the blue bottle against the window, which I've now done very effectively, actually. <laughs> it's breathed its last breath, we can say that. Although actually right now, or in its last breath, actually, I think it was breathing out of its art um, because I crushed it with a book. So blue bottle has been dispatched into a, another universe. You can go and join the rest of his mates that I've also killed. Oh, everybody's saying, give me a glass. I would, you know, I would I have many of these. I have many when they're on offer my husband buys them by the caseload in my garage here there are many many of these and I would share them with you um, and a bless to you people that came to Blackpool um, you brought me people turn up to my gigs now like I've had one well three in Blackpool with bottles of this <laughs> just brilliant it's a, it's a brilliant situation so many things to tell you. Yes, exactly. Fuck the blue bottle. That's exactly. And you know when you lie in bed at night and all of a sudden you hear, and, it, and it's like, you know that they're fat. And I know people say I hate fat people. I don't, but I do hate fat blue bottles. And they're like, and they can hardly like, because they've been eating so much dog shit. They're like really heavy. Like one of those air shows where you see some disastrous crash and just before it crashes the plane is really low down with its propeller failing <laughs> that's what these blue bottles are like and you lie at night don't you and um you hear them <laughs> and you kind of fear is that they're going to land on you in the night and, like suck all their shit on your face this is what happens to me i don't know anyone else just me and so i have to get up i have to put the light on and then because i'm so angry <laughs> i think when I squash you, I'm going to squash you really hard in a way that I hope really hurts. I hope the last thought that goes through that blue bottle's brain is like, fuck, ouch, like that, just before they die. Anyway, that happens a lot, and it happens a lot this time of year. I hate them all. I hate them. One of my other favourite things to do is to get my hairspray, which actually is terrifically expensive. You'll know, um, Macron is gay. We know that, darlings. We've known that for decades. I could show you pictures <laughs> from my time on Mail Online, I tell you that. Um, mm -hmm. Small in every department is our Macron, let me just tell you. Um, Elnet, you know, it's quite expensive, isn't it? I use that on blue bottles. I know, If what are they called? Petter, who are the animal people that are just vile and dull and look anorexic at all times? sort of animal protection thing. So when I see a blue bottle, if I can get it with my L-net, which is like the one where you, you just have to spray something with this L-net and it stays there forever. Like I could literally take my pathetic hair like that, spray it and it will stay there forever. So I spray the blue bottle and it's stuck forever <laughs> mid-flight, like some fat, hairy turd who reached its last flight. Anyway, that was just to start us. Have a little, have a little drink amongst yourselves. Uh. What type of champagne? To, uh, champagne? How weird was that? <laughs> I haven't even been. I only had a glass of wine at the pub with my husband and a bowl of chips. Oh, come on! I love mayonnaise with chips. I'm not allowed mayonnaise with chips with my husband, so I have to. We have to have a partition, rather like our bed, where there's a partition. And if I go over it, I get nudged back. Like if I put an elbow over it, Mark's like, that's your side. And Mark does strategic pillow positioning. Does anybody? Where he puts his pillow over at the start of the night so that his area of the bed seems bigger. So it's the same with the chips that we have at the pub. Um, so they have a partition down the middle so that I can put salt and mayonnaise on my half because he doesn't have any of that. I know it's, it's inconceivable that we're even married, but we are. It's more inconceivable that I've been married for like 14 years or something's outrageous. Um, gay pictures of Macron. Yes. No, I mean, I yes, I 
of course, but I didn't have the, I couldn't share them. And now they're just on my phone. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure that was made up. I love chips with mayonnaise. I'm telling you, there's just so many people out there who's so much more like me than my own lovely husband. But that's probably why we're still married, isn't it? Because if we were like me, we'd be assholes. And that would be my first marriage, which lasted less than a year. Things I have to tell you about. Number one, I need to tell you about Zara items, which this is. Do you like it? It's my Paris purchase. Because, of course, all of the big stores in Paris get the stuff that we never get where I live. Because we only get stuff for old people that no one gives a shit about. Um, why do people do this? Stop it, Zara, you bunch of titwanks. And anybody else from cheap clothing stores who does this. And it's not just one of these, is it, my darlings? Ooh, peppered mayo. Mm -hmm. They put not just one of these labels, do they? And these labels literally, look, my nose is massive, but this label, look, is longer than my nose, right? So that gives you an indication, do you see, of the size of these things are like a metre long. And then they put them in the seam here, right in the itchy bit of your rib, not in like here or here, but here. And they put about 50 F-bomb thousand of these, don't they? And no one gives a shit. I don't care what this thing, what am I on about? I'm on about Zara blouses and they're shitting, pissing these things. Look, I have to chop them out. And then very often I end up chopping the garment. And um, don't be rude about my nose. Um, and I can be rude about my nose. You don't get to be rude about my nose. They put these in, no one ever reads them. No one gives a shit. And ultimately these are just disposable garments, aren't they? No one's going to look and think, oh yes, I must wash this, yes, by hand on a Tuesday when it's not raining. Ah oh, yes, I must wash this on a thingy in a, in a 10 degree heat using only shampoo. No one gives a toss. We wear this a few times, if it doesn't make it, what the hell? Don't put shitting labels that itch us. Right, that. Zara's quite shit nowadays. Completely agree with you. I think it's quite shit too. Um, so I've just been told, I think she's still here, so we have to whisper. But my daughter is going out on a date. I don't know if whispering works on a live, does it? I don't know. And um, I've just been told not to make such a big thing of it. So I tried to offer her a blouse, which I love. It's quite like snazzy. It's meant for younger people, I'm sure. And I was just told not to make a thing of the date. So I've been told not to say anything. The truth is, I'm quite keen on this chap. So I'm kind of promoting this chap by like subversively doing things that help. So I thought I was being helpful by offering a top that I thought would be good. But actually it was the wrong thing to do. And I've just been told, don't make a thing. It's not a thing. Don't make a thing. So now I'm really trying not to make a thing. <laughs> okay, so that was just the secret. Is he like us? I think so. He also drives a tractor. Oh, what's not to love? And my daughter drives a tractor. So they could have like a whole tractor thing going. And eventually, let's just say they own a really exclusive little farm somewhere. They could build me a fuck off great big granny annex, self-contained, off grid, mm. care for my needs, and I don't have to speak to any bastard for the rest of my days, which won't be many anyway. That's what I'm doing. Right, it's been a great day, great, great day, great week for the unvaccinated, and I'm so happy to see unvaccinated trending on the platform of twats that is Twitter. I love that the BBC documentary on trying to persuade people that if you didn't have the vaccine, you're an asshole was a complete crash and a failure. I love that people have been diving in and celebrating. And I really, really, really like most of all, the thing I can feel is this pride for people that never had any of the jabs. And I love it. And it doesn't matter if you did have, because there's no judgment on what other people did or didn't do. And it doesn't matter if you did have the jab and then regretted it. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. There's no judgment on someone else's and their choices. But for the people that didn't and resisted and have still resisted, and resisted despite everything, I feel the sense of there's a pride thing going on amongst us. And I think Novak Djokovic really helped with that. He really helps with it with the US Open that he's not going to attend. And that's been really glorious. And I wish, I wish, I wish 
that Nike, instead of celebrating the toss pots as they always do, like Lewis Hamilton or Castor Semenya, <laughs> he, she, she, he, instead of celebrating them or the twat that took a knee for the US national anthem, instead of celebrating them, why doesn't Nike do something really clever and celebrate Novak? Because if Nike is about freedom, freedom of the road and freedom of health and freedom to be what you want and freedom to run fast and freedom to be as good as you can be, why not be the no why not champion Novak, who has chosen his own mind over fame and glory and legendary status, which he has with all of us lot anyway. Um but anyway, it's been glorious to see um unvaccinated being uh, celebrated and celebrated by each other. And I love that. And I love that um, people who didn't have it now can feel a sense of camaraderie and realise, as we were saying all along, that you're never on your own. Because one of the things that so many people felt during those whole times, and still, was that they were alone because their family told them they were assholes and their husbands or wives told them that they were assholes and their employers told them that they were assholes. But I think what people are starting to see is that we're so many that resisted all along. And I love that. I also love that the people who are like, oh, climate change, oh, climate change, are the people who got a vaccine in order to be able to go on holiday to get some sunshine. It's like, mm. <laughs> So I've just spent um, a couple of, no, I'm not Jewish. Everyone's having some weird Jewish debate on here about me. A, I don't give a shit what I am or what I am not. B, you don't get to speculate on what I am and what I am not. And if I was Jewish, brilliant. And if I'm not, also brilliant. And if you are against being something, fuck right off. Don't be on here. Piss off. We don't need you. I didn't ask you to be here. You don't need to listen to my opinions or the opinions of my family on here. So if you had nothing positive to say or no encouragement for someone else, please do fuck off. I don't need your viewership. I don't need your eyeballs or your ears. I have no interest in you. Just go away. We're quite happy. Thank you. On our own. Good. I have been away this week in Paris. Gay Perry, avec my little daughter, India, as her 18th birthday present, many of you know. Um, that's what I got her for her birthday. So we had the fabulous time, although it was bloody hot. I mean, brilliantly hot. I loved it. At one point, we were in our underwear in the public fountains underneath the Eiffel Tower. So I have a picture of Indy with her. In that, you know, Indy just wears like, because Indy's like, Indy rocks to her own rhythm. She wears her own kind of undies that most teenagers probably wouldn't be seen dead in. And on the arse it says, you go girl. <laughs> so I have a picture of Indy under the Eiffel Tower with her big you go girl pants on, otherwise naked under the Eiffel Tower. And so for me, that was like the perfect moment of, um, we talked about this the other day, didn't we, in my little book, where we talk about India, how India wasn't supposed to be around or wasn't supposed to make it or wasn't supposed to like live for a day or maybe she'll be a monster, this whole, when you have children that are born different. And then this, you know, 18 year old under the Eiffel Tower with you go girl pants on naked in the fountain. <laughs> yes, clawed one back from the evil side. So we had a lovely time. Is it bad I'm drinking on my own? No, never. Always do that. Always, 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 always treat yourself. Us Brits and whomever else is here, um, we have this weird punitive thing where we have to like self-flagellate. So, you know, if we're on our own, oh, well, maybe I should put the hoover around. Or we're on our own, oh, maybe while I'm in the bathroom taking my makeup off, I'll also just polish this. Oh, while I'm doing that, and I do this as well, whilst I'm like earbudding my ear, I'll also just jiff down that surface. We're like crazy for that stuff. And we never just go, do you know what? I'm going to sit on this chair for one hour and drink wine and listen to music or read a book or actually, frankly, do piss all. Or, as I did the other day, shave my knees in the sunlight. Hmm. Shaving your legs in the shower is actually a bit silly because you can't see shit. Water is pissing down in your eyes. Invariably, you've got some sort of conditional or soap or situation. Typically, I'm also trying to jiff the shower. Cause, oh, yes, we all do that when we're in there. If you actually shave your legs or knees, in my case, I have hairy knees. I know. Nipple hair, hairy knees. This is why people, when they say, oh, Katie, you're, you know, ooh, 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 can I come and do bad things to your anus? I'm always like, no. You don't really know who I am at all. I have nipple hair and hairy knees. But if you sit on your front doorstep in the sunshine, 
that's when you get a really good angle on your knee hair. I'm just saying, the other day I sat there in the sunshine shaving my knees. It was very effective until the Amazon Prime driver arrived. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, sorry, <laughs> just caught me shaving my knees. And he's like, hmm, what now? <laughs> Dan Wharton. <gasps> oh, I could dish, I could dish so much dirt. I never do that because I'm not that person, but let's do that. Anyway, so he's like, and what name is it? And I'm like, um, Hopkins. <laughs> Katie, and he goes, I just need to take a, um, I just need to take a picture <laughs> with the delivery. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> trying to put the, <laughs> I'm trying to put it over here so that he can't actually get a picture of me shaving my knees in the sunshine whilst getting a delivery. <laughs> Honestly, the things that go on. I got caught the other day by a delivery driver having a piss. <laughs> In my own garden. Because when I'm outside, um, do we, shall we, do we share this? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> okay, Dan, what we're going to do, we're going to do, um, well, what is the sizing like? I don't know. I don't know what size this is. Hold on. Can we see? Oh, Dan. Hold on, let me see if I can, what if I get it really close? I don't think you're going to be able to see, are you? Can you see the size now? I don't know. <laughs> Probably just see my enormous bazookas. I can look at later and tell you what size it is, but I have really small boobs, look, and there's not much room. So I'm feeling like maybe I, I probably tried on an extra small in the store. I strip off and get, I try things on in stores. I don't do the cute, never do a, um, never get in the line for a changing room, darling. Just strip off in the store. Because A, what are they going to do? B, by the time they find you, you've already tried it on and you know if it's okay or not. And C, who cares? So people have seen pants before, people have seen vaginas before. People, have seen, I just take everything off, try it on, decide. And by the time the assistant's going, ma'am, you can't do that here. I'm always like, well, A, I'm not, you know, pleasuring myself. And B, it's all, it's all on already. But I will, I put this up for you to see. But never, never, I see people in lines for changing rooms and I think, oh, you know, these are the tips you need. Just strip off. Exactly. Find the little quiet corner if you feel ashamed. But if you're like me, just get it off there and then. Boom. On and off. Try it on. It's going to be a shit bit of item anyway, isn't it? If it's from Zara. And this thing, honestly, is quite hot. My boobs are 30, what are they? 32B. But that's a lie, really. This is all, look, this is all padding. And then they're just pulled up from there so anyway I was having a wee in the garden because of my you know my shorts I wear in fact these are one of them but can we see them oh so I just sort of you know like you do with a swimming costume what do you call it bathing suit <laughs> I pull it to one side in the garden and have a wee um so I'm standing there just oh with it cocked to one side having a quick wee because of the whole going inside pulling your shorts out look at my age I have how much time have I got left I can't waste time on things like that. And also it's very dry. So I was having a sneaky wee while standing. So a little, you could argue, Casta Semenya-esque. Hmm? It probably from, from the, um, what driver was he from? It wasn't Amazon Prime. <laughs> he was from another company. Mad as a box of frogs, I am. I also wonder, have you ever owned a box of frogs? Because that would make you a lot madder than me. Anyway, I was having a sneaky piss while standing, Casta Semenya, the delivery driver turns up and there was no real way to soften the edges of it. So I just said, oh, sorry, having a sneaky wee. <laughs> he looked really scared. And also when he held out his little machine thing, he was like, hmm, <laughs> like that. <laughs> so maybe don't deliver parcels to my house. I don't know. It wasn't DHL either. It was one of the ones that's really shit. Is it every or something like that? The ones that ask you how your delivery was. Oh, I don't want to tell you about my, I don't want to know that it's coming. I don't want to know that I've had it. I don't want to tell you how it was. It's not like, it's not sex, is it? It's not, it's not like an experience I need to talk about. You just delivered me a fucking toothbrush head. I don't know. I don't need to rate my delivery driver. Although, if he saw me having a piss and survived, maybe, you know, 
give him a bonus. Maybe it was his bonus. I saw Katie Hopkins piss. Right, I did actually have things we were supposed to talk about, but look, 20 minutes in and all we've talked about is me pissing in the yard. Um, <laughs> why am I never on the screens anymore? So I think it's something called, um, I think it's a D notice, but essentially it's a coordinated media ban. So if you look at uh, a fairly high level, sort of Murdoch, Rothmere, um, news organisation level, there's a list of people who aren't allowed to be on TV screens and I'd be one of them. And then other TV programmes like GB News, you could argue, or you should have a show on there, which of course I should, and of course it would have higher ratings than anyone else's, which is what the boys are always afraid of, is that that's Murdoch run as well. And I, not only did I leave Murdoch's newspaper to go to the mail, um, Murdoch also was under huge pressure to fire me for my Stop the Boats column. And he did fire me, but my editor wouldn't. So Murdoch isn't exactly a massive supporter. And I think after certain people got classified as terrorists, I think I might have been one of them. So that's why you don't see me on TV screens anymore. And I'm on the ban list at Fox News as well. So even if you have like Tucker or Laura Ingram or people who, you know, speak as if, like GB News, in fact, speak as if they are the the purveyors of freedom of speech, they're not because someone like me still can't go on there. So that, that, I'm not complaining, I'm just, I can't be on GB News, I'm on the ban list. Um, and those boys are approved of, and actually typically, you know, those boys would be slightly frightened of having me around because I'm just sort of better at um, what they're trying to do. Um, and I don't mean that in a bragging way, I just mean in an honest way. Dan Wooten, yes, always had many, many weight issues. So his weight balloons according to how his emotions are, which is true for loads of people. He just tries not to be honest about it. Whereas I think actually if he was honest about it, it'd be very cool as a, as a honest thing. And uh, when he's very nervous, he gets very, very overweight. Uh, and you see that happening. Uh, he was always just the kind of crappy celebrity writer on The Sun back in the day when I was there, but always very desperate. And I think now he's really found his moment with GB News. I don't know if he's blowing Murdoch or um, similar, maybe giving him foot massages, I can't tell. Um, but he's also still got his Mail Online column. Um, so, and that was an arrangement between Daily Mail and Murdoch to promote, cross-promote GB News. But he's very average and very ordinary, not very, not the sharpest tool in the shed. And obviously I've said these things to Dan's face, so it's not like I'm being behind his back. We've, I've sat opposite him and told him these things. Um, in fact, there's a video of me, um, him interviewing me at The Sun when I was allowed to be at The Sun and me addressing these matters to his face. So, um, yeah, now he's had it, now he's having his moment and he feels very popular and blessed. But, um, yeah, he's about as intelligent as my, um, well, I don't know. I don't think there's any bit of my anatomy that is actually as stupid as he is. Um, but yeah, he's very much the face of GB News and he par parades himself or masquerades as if he's some sort of torchbearer for freedom, but, but actually um, dumb as a box of rocks and struggling internally with all sorts of things. Um, I'm not sure he's really ever had a long-term partner, which I think is always indicative of someone who's very ill at ease with himself. Anyway, that's fine. Everybody says, oh, GB News. <laughs> and I, I guess the same as Fox News. Oh, Fox News. I guess I know a different side of that because I know how long I've been banned from those shows for, even though the presenters always want me to go on, but I'm no longer allowed to go on there. Um, what can I tell you about before I toddle off 25 past? Um, PM race thoughts. Yes, I I feel like um, neither of them are good news, particularly Rishi Sunak is the worst of all news. I feel like it's increasingly the facade of democracy. We know that there is no real voice for us. And I think since Covid and the lockdowns, we know that there is no one standing for us. I think potentially Kemi Badenoch had the possibility of creating the biggest spanner in the works for the left which is why she was removed by the establishment very quickly and they did kind of tactical voting to get her out of the race and now she'll be given a cabinet position so she'll be kind of patted on the head but kept in a safe little box where she can't do too much harm and that's not what we needed we needed her released um so i have no faith in any of that process but I would say that Truss 
uh, would be a better selection than uh, Sunak just because of his finances and I can't bear yet to see this country completely given over to the globalists and it feels like he's the ultimate globalist amongst them but uh, yeah I haven't really got an appetite for the race I think my view is sort of set kind of longer to a time when um, ordinary people get to uh, rise up and take some stuff back and I don't know when that's going to come but I have to hope it comes soon uh, Brexit, I see Brexit being blamed for so many things, including Dover, and I can't help but feel that having seen a whole summer where our ordinary people were kind of crushed at our normal airports for the crime of trying to go on holiday with their families, and this is the busiest time for Dover, families in their cars, because they don't want to try and go through an airport with their children, and now they've got them again. And so people can blame Brexit, people can blame the French, people can blame whoever. For me, it's just part of the coordinated effort to get people to give up on trying to travel anywhere, um, which is why it's so important to me that we all still try and do that. Um, <laughs> Sunak was endorsed by uh, China Communist Party, exactly. And I think they were all on payroll and we saw Boris, you know, March 2000, turn on a dime, lock down the nation, start spouting the narrative. It, they, they get them all in the end. And I'm not on the electoral roll I can't and don't vote because I don't want to formally acknowledge where I live because if I do that, people come for either my home or um, or my head or any of those things. So, uh, But I wouldn't want to endorse the democratic process anymore anyway with a vote because I don't believe it's um, relevant. And I guess my biggest sense of that is things like the 100,000 nurses who are going to be obliged to take a vaccine or our brilliant care home staff who were thrown out into the streets and they're the reason people are stuck in ambulances now in hospitals because they can't get a bed because beds are full because we can't get old people into care homes because we sacked our care home staff so for me democracy it would have to change completely for me to want to buy into it anymore and I never thought I'd hear myself say those things but those are the things I would say we're already at half past eight would you even believe it and um, what can I tell you I can tell you we will be back next week um, and in the interim my husband is going to have a birthday, lovely Mark, and I'm going to try and take him camping because he hates camping but I think it would be super fun and what I need is a pub garden and we can just put the, the tent, literally, if this is the pub garden door, I don't know why it has to be here, <laughs> as if a pub garden door would be on one of my many chins but then the tent would be like here. <laughs> So you go from the pub to the tent. <laughs> That's my plan. Um, I can tell you that uh, Wales, I'll be coming to Wales. We're actually trying to find a bigger venue at the minute as well. Not far from the original one, but just because of numbers. And 10th of September, Blackpool, new material, new stuff, new set, new whatever it's going to be. A 10th of September in Blackpool. Um, and I think we're trying to get the link up on Katie's arms. But if you do Blackpool... September, Katie, with Belfield, once he's finished fanning around in the courts where they're persecuting him for reasons I don't know, uh, 10th of September in Blackpool. And um, that will be just a, a glorious moment for us all to be back together in the same room and just, this will be, you can look around and go, yes, this is my family and this is good. Right, come to Glasgow. I would love to, I will. Uh, I received my signed book. Yes, well, thank you. Thank you for um, everybody who's been on Katie's Arms and ordered a book. You'll know that we're trying to do them. We do them at cost and then Mark's worked out all the postage. And someone actually paid, whoever you are out there, you paid too much for your postage today. And so lovely Mark went on and has refunded it. Um, so please be reassured. We're, we're not trying to take any money from anyone. Um, but yes, I really like writing those books because I feel like I'm writing to you guys. And... Um, and we're kind of somehow all on, you know, I believe we're on this web together, being connected. So writing those messages feels, it reminds me of the feeling of, of being on my radio show and getting to talk to you. So that's why I love those books. Um, so I will maybe see you in September in Blackpool. Maybe I'll get to see you in Wales. And if not, I will get to see you here. Hi, Katie from Norfolk. Hello, Norfolk. I will get to see you and I will post this across to YouTube I'll get to see you next week here and I can update you on my camping trip <laughs> with lovely Mark. I'm not going if it's pissing it down, obviously. Um, and I'll um, thank you 
for all the kind things. Um, and I will see you here next week for the Katie's Arms. And until then, uh, cheers and keep going. Bloody well, keep going. Don't let anyone tell you what to do. If someone even starts telling you a rule, look at them and just go, no, no I, d I don't need to do that, do I? And just question. Anytime someone starts on a rule, start from, I don't think I need to do that rule. If there's a rule about changing rooms, don't do them. If there's a rule about this or that, or you can't do that, just question it and do what you wanted to do. Because very often it's just a very average fat person telling you things you don't need to know. Just bypass all of the rules and, and forge your path. Okay, and I'll speak to you next week.